Okay, let's get started by looking at the syntax of ASP. Now the syntax actually tells us how we can formulate our problems as logic programs. They describe what is a logic program, how can I form it. Keep in mind that program is a bit of a misnomer because after all what we do here is modeling. The purpose of a logic program is only to capture the problem in a formal way, but not at all to describe how it is going to be solved. This will be done later on, so keep this in mind. Okay, so this is more or less a description, a refined description of what uh, you've already seen in the motivational part. So a logic program is a finite set of rules. And what is important here is again, stressing this, that it's a set. So the order in which you write down your program doesn't matter. The only thing, at least here, this set has to be finite. We're not looking at infinite programs. Okay, the other thing is that the program is formed over a set of atoms. This is the calligraphic A here, from which more or less we get the vocabulary, right? And atoms are just propositions that can be true and false, can be something artificial like PQR, but also it rains, I have green hair, I pay you a beer. Anyway, things that can be true and false that are atomic, atomic sentences. And so this calligraphic A is often also referred to as an alphabet, and sometimes a signature, although I don't like that too much, because at least for me, a signature is an extension of the alphabet that also gives you the other syntactic entities like opening parentheses, closing parentheses, a comma, a dot, or whatever. So it, it really is, ca captures the whole language while the alphabet is only about the atoms that we're talking about. Okay, then a rule has this form, as you've already seen in the motivational part. So we, we have a head and a body, and the, both are connected by this implication, which can be read as an if. So A0 can be derived if the body is satisfied. And of course, what it means that the body is satisfied, we will see later on in the semantic section. So I also perhaps owe you a uh, an explanation what I mean with this normally. Normally, actually omit the normal, because this is, if I talk about a rule, I mean such a rule here. So something that has uh, only atoms as its constituents, and notably also a single atom in the head. Because as we will see later, there are more complex language constructs like cardinality or weight constraints. Also sometimes, and this is then what we call a disjunctive rule, there may be uh, several atoms in the head that are disjunctively connected. Anyway, whenever I talk only about a rule, I mean a normal rule, and this is a rule of this type. Okay, uh, keep in mind that what this here constitutes is the mathematical core. This is more or less what we use to describe the formalities of ASP. And again, the modeling language is richer and we will come to this later. What is also important is the concept of a literal, because as you see here in the body, we have atoms that well, are preceded with nothing and other atoms that are preceded with a negation symbol, right? That reads uh, not AM, of AM plus one which doesn't tell much now. But anyway, all these guys here are literals. A literal is either an atom or an atom preceded by a negation symbol. And I will often talk about body literals, for instance. These are the literals in the body here. And also here keep in mind that a body is a finite set of rules. It's again the thing, so we in the course mainly consider finite, uh, finite bodies, finite sets of literals that constitute bodies, but there's also work on infinite infinite uh, bodies, but I, I don't want to detail that now. Okay, the other thing that is uh, good to mention at that point is my convention on, on, on denoting things. And I also meant, I already mentioned that before, but keep in mind that whenever I want to talk about code, I use typewriter font. And then in this, in this case, actually here, the implication is denoted by, by colon minus. And as in source code, every expression is terminated by a dot. The other thing, of course, is the not. Negation here is written by not. Okay, and that's it so far with the formalities. This is more or less the core of ASP, but now, nonetheless, to work with this, we need a bit more. And hence, we now look at notation. The idea is simply to define a bunch of functions that give us access to the components of the rules. So if we have our rule here, that we abbreviate with lowercase r. The obvious functions we want are those that give us access to the head and the body of the rule. So we use lowercase h to give us the head 
and uppercase B to give us the body. Again, visualized here. So, two things here. First of all, see that I use a lowercase letter to denote a single object, and that's something I, a convention I try to do in the whole course. So, whenever it's a lowercase letter, like H, and actually even A here, right, it's a single object, and whenever it's a uppercase letter, it's a set of objects. So, second remark is again, set. The body is a set, so it doesn't matter in which order you wrote down the body literals. Okay, having said this, sometimes it's convenient to not get the, only the head of or the head atom of the rule, but to get the set containing it, so the singleton. And for this, again, following convention, I then use a capital H to give me the singleton set containing the head of a rule, of rule R. So, the next thing that is handy is to have all the heads and all the bodies occurring in the program. So, we just generalize uh, the, 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 this notation to, to the program and overload, of course, the, the, the symbol. Uh, that's one thing. And then, sometimes we want to go a bit deeper in the structure of the, of the, of the rules and we want to access the positive body and the negative body literals. Here, the only thing where one has to take attention is that when we want to have the negative body, um, when one wants to access the negative body literals, we actually get all the atoms involved. So we don't, don't get the literals, right? Uh, this comes in handy also in certain definitions. So we strip off the, the negation from all the negative body literals. So finally, uh, we can also gather in this way the, all the atoms in the program. And here we use the notation of uh, giving us the singleton head, and we just union the, the head and the positive and the negative body atoms uh, over all rules, and this gives us the atoms. And here actually we need to, here you see actually why we strip off the negation, because then we just get the atoms. So this brings me also to a, a, a command. So often enough we assume that the alphabet, that more or less the, 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 the one, the, the set of atoms over which we define the program, is, are just the atoms we have in the program. So we don't bother about the ones that are not mentioned. That comes in very handy. And the second definition is that of a positive uh, program. These are programs that have no negative body literals. So they are programs that just have um, rules of this form where the set of negative body literals or body, or neg well, of atoms occurring negatively in the body is empty. And these are very important uh, to define afterwards the semantics because with, for positive programs we can more or less easily get an intuition on things uh, before we then step up, step up to the semantic of the full set of rules. Now before we all do this, let's look at some examples. Now the first two rules actually represent the same rule. They just emphasize that the order of the body literals does not matter because they are treated or they are, they are a set. So the first rule can be read as A is derivable if B is derivable and C is not derivable. Or A holds if B holds and C does not hold. And the second rule is just the same, just that you have to re... That it's, it's the same thing, right? It doesn't matter if I now reread the same thing differently. Okay, here are some easier examples. But also of some interest, so for instance, this, this rule here is also called a fact because it has no uh, conditions, the body is empty, so A holds no matter what, uh, what other conditions are satisfied. And normally when you write this uh, in the modeling language of an ASP system, this is written uh, just with a dot at the end, A dot, and the, the arrow or the conditional is actually dropped. But we, we just use this to emphasize that it's nonetheless a rule and not just an atom. Okay, then the the next rule, A if B, and here actually we have no negative body literals, hence this is a positive rule, just as the third rule, a fact, is also a positive rule. Uh, this is not the case with the fourth, fourth rule, where, well, actually the fifth rule, uh, where we have uh, no positive body literals, just a negative one, and there is no special name for these guys. So A, B, and C that I was using here are, of course, pretty artificial in, in reality, or more or less also in, in when you do interesting stuff, you have, you have a, a rich, richer atoms. So this is a rule saying that, well, Joe is a bachelor if he is male and not married, right? And actually the not married is interesting because the way you should read it here in ASP, even though we have not talked about semantics, is unless you can show that uh, he is married, right? 
So because keep in mind that ASP works under the closed world assumption if something is undefined, it must not be false, it can also be undefined, uh, it cannot be proven and hence not married is true. So this really is, you can sometimes read this rather like, like, like an unless uh, than a not, but just as, a, as an example. Then apart from the notion of rules, and you see this, all this, this whole set of rules can be regarded as a program if you like, we also had the notion of literals just to give you some examples on this. So all atoms that we have been seeing, so A, B, C, bachelor Joe, male Joe, married Joe, are positive literals or atoms. This means the same thing. It's just sometimes when you talk when you talk about something in the context of, of literals, you want to say positive and negative ones. While if you just talk about atoms, you use the term atoms. Even again, positive literals and atoms is the same thing. And here we have used also two uh, negative literals: not C and not Mary Joe. Here, here, and here, and up here. And th these are examples for negative literals. So these were the examples. So last but not least, let me mention some notational conventions I'm using, I'm trying to use throughout the lecture. So I'd like to distinguish three levels. One is the source code, that's more like what, I'm, what you see on the left hand side, the logic programs in the mathematical uh, interpretation and uh, formulas, which is still a more gen a general thing than, than programs that just consist of rules. So there are the standard logical symbols, right? There are the logical constants, true and false. and uh, they basically appear on the level of formulas and are denoted by the bottom and the top symbol. Then the conditional if, we've already seen that, right? So on the source code level, it's represented by a colon minus. When we write rules in logic programs, we write the implication from right to left. And when we write formulas, it's just the other way around. But again, I think it's a nice indication to, sh to show at which level we are. Then here's the symbol, the, the, th the three symbols for or, if and only if, or bidirectional implication is I only look at on the on the on the logical uh, no, on the formula level default negation on the as we as we've seen is treated or is spelled out as not on the source code level and I use the classical negation symbol for logic programs and, and formulas and sometimes there is even another type of negation which is strong negation we'll come to that later and then the implementation people use your, normally a minus symbol and I'll be using the tilde this is perhaps a point to say, if you look at former editions actually of our publications or book, I treat this the other way around, but I think this is actually the appropriate way, simply because nowadays ASP has a logical, logical foundations with a logic of here and there, and this is simply the treatment of negation, hence it also deserves the proper symbol. Another thing, again, I was mentioning this when I introduced rules, uh, I tried to use typewriter font, as perhaps you can see here or not, I don't know, uh, whenever it comes to source code. And otherwise, when I talk about mathematical or conceptual aspects, I use, well, plain LaTeX symbols. Okay, so this actually closes the section on syntax and uh, stay tuned for the semantics.